I will cover every inch of my body in gasoline if this fades to black. What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jesse, and you're watching. This video is going to be a bit of an experiment. We are going to be experimenting today where a grump, myself, tries to read romance for the first time. It is no secret if you've spent even a moment on this channel, you will know that romance is just my least favorite genre. And this video is going to be me reading adult romance for the first time with the intention of actually trying to enjoy these books and get into this genre. And we are going to see if I, an asexual grump, can be made to feel something. Despite the fact that I really do not enjoy romances, I do enjoy books that have a romance subplot so long as the romance is not the center of the story. So this is going to be the first time in my entire life, in my over 20 years of being a diehard reader, that I will be intentionally trying to enjoy a book that centers a romance. Now, it's going to be quite a challenge. Like the only romances I've ever enjoyed are in horror books. And that might have something to do with the reason that I'm perpetually single. All of the books that you're going to see me read and review in the series are book of the month titles. This video is not sponsored by book of the month, but those are just the romances that people are loving and hyping. And I really wanted to read them, especially because the selection that I have here are kind of unique in terms of the romance plot lines. There's a little bit of everything and that is what I wanted. Different settings, different types of romances. Uh, there's some neurodiversity. I just, I really, Really wanted to get a good mixed bag to give myself the best chance of finding something that I enjoy while also exposing myself to something new. Now, like I said, this video is not sponsored by Book of the Month, but I do have a code if you want your first Book of the Month box for only $9.99. That code is Bowties and it will be in the description box below. Now, let's talk about the books that I am going to be reading in this vlog. We have The Love Hypothesis. This is a romance that I was actually pretty excited about because it is a science romance. We are following two scientists who have to fake date for their own career. We also have The Heart Principle where we are following two characters, one who is a professional musician and the other who, I forget what he does. I think he runs a clothing company. And the two of them decide that they want to have a one night stand, but the one night stand goes wrong. So they try it again and again. Then we have people we meet on vacation. This is a book that I was initially pretty geeked about when Book of the Month sent it because I love, I love the vacation journey trope. That is always one of my favorite tropes. So this is a book about two best friends who have been taking vacations with each other for 10 years and then something goes wrong and they decide to get together two years later after two years of not speaking and pull off one last vacation. I also have never read the friends to lovers trope specifically in a romance. So I'm very excited to see how I feel about that. And the last book I'm gonna be trying to read for this vlog is The X Hex. And this is a book that I probably am arguably the most excited about because it is a witchy romance. It's a second chance romance and a witch curses her ex-boyfriend and then they get together much many years later and she has to try and lift that curse. These are the four books I'm going to be reading throughout the course of this experiment. I will be evaluating them not based off of the writing but based off of the strength and believability of the romance for the steaminess and whether or not these books can make me feel something. If you know what I'm saying. I think these books have their work cut out for them. Oh, I'm praying that I don't regret this. <laughs> Here we go. Jaddy. Hi. Can you help us pick out a romance book for us to start with? Okay. What up, my channel? I really can't stand you. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jananigans, and you're watching. I'm done. You're watching the end of this friendship. Okay. So we really want to start the heart principle, but Jan isn't ready for us to start that yet. Oh my God. Well, a second ago, I couldn't start it, and now it's I can start it. And then there's Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Okay, babe, so which 
Which am I starting with? But I think y'all would like the love hypothesis because it's science-y. And you're a science degree holder. Okay, perfect. That is all the encouragement <laughs> that we need. Love and you. Star- Do you like Star Wars? No, hate it. Oh. No, it's not that I hate it. It's that um, our mom is a huge Star Wars fan and like was growing up. So therefore it wasn't cool because like my mom was into it. And <laughs> now I'm not into it purely t- because I can't prove that I made a mistake. <laughs> like I can't, I can't admit that I fucked up. I'm like, it's too late. I need to just lay in this bed. <laughs> a prideful entity. Prideful entity. Oh, my mom is so cool. Like she... Like she was into like X Files. She was in. She was into all. <sighs> My mom was cool before it was cool, and I hate it. <laughs> what is a Star Wars retelling? The love hypothesis is mm-hmm. okay. Great. Well, then I'll have read Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I can physically see people disliking this video <laughs> because of my ignorance. <laughs> Hi, Akasha. Hello. Akasha? Who's a good girl? Oh, who's a good girl? Look at that butt. Look at that booty. Oh, look at the face. Look at the face. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Yes, who's a good girl? Come here. Come here. Let me pet you. Let me pet you. Let me pet you. Who's a good girl? Oh, who's a good girl? Akasha? Good girl. Good girl. My beloved Jan, AKA Jane, picked out the love hypothesis and started reading this, got to page 136 and freaking love it. Absolutely just head over heels for this book. Just like really, really enjoying it, okay? So this book has the fake dating trope, which I just swear is all the rage right now. And I am very ambivalent to the fake dating trope probably because I don't care for romance, but I'm enjoying it in this case. I think it's really funny that we also have like the grumpy sunshine trope so adam the love interest he is rude and he seems to take great pleasure in shredding the work of others and making them have to scrap their research projects and kind of start over i don't know if i'm the jerk but i don't feel that adam is an asshole i feel like he has high standards for science that he feels a moral obligation to ensure that any science that he's signing off on is actually going to be a credible contribution to the field I don't see anything wrong with that. I also really love that he is a man of few words. That is like, I've noticed that that is the kind of people that like I'm attracted to, the kind of the more like mysterious types. So I really am enjoying his character. Although I just don't know if it's like my queerness or what, but all of the talk of how big he is and how big his hands are 
Akash is about to bring me a toy. I can feel it happening. I can hear it happening. That's doing nothing for me. Like, I don't care how big this man is. They keep emphasizing. It keeps being emphasized that he's like six foot five and he's huge hands and he keeps being compared to a mountain. And I just, I could do, I, I could do without that. That being said, I have no connection to all of it all. I'm not interested nor disinterested in her character. She's just meh to me. The only thing about this book that is gripping me is Adam and I really, really like him. I also think that the forced proximity in some instances is just a little ridiculous. For example, the forced kissing scene where An is like, oh my God, your boyfriend just moved a truck. Go kiss him. First of all, I am 100% positive that An knows about the fake dating. And that's my theory. An knows about the fake dating and is forcing proximity between the two of them because she knows it's fake. Those of you who are reading this book, are you getting the same feelings? Because that is my feeling. My theory is that An knows that this is fake. So for those of you who haven't read this, An is the best friend. And the whole excuse for the fake dating is that Olive want, is that An wants to date the guy that Olive just broke up with and she wouldn't feel comfortable dating the dude unless on unless olive was dating someone else and so that's where the fake dating situation came in but the fake kissing scene was just a bit much for me because i was like okay olive was like oh my god i have to go and kiss him because otherwise on is gonna get suspicious girl just say i don't want to kiss him in public i don't like pda like, how was that not an option for you you know what i mean like there were tons of people. It's just, okay, whatever. But it's all right, I'm gonna suspend disbelief. So all that being said, I really like the book. I think that Adam's getting a bad rap for no freaking reason. I And I'm really excited. I just can't put it down. I can't put it down. Like I read to page 136 in one sitting. It was like two in the morning. And so we are going to be continuing this amazing, amazing book. And I will check in with y'all in a bit. Okay, as of right now, our page count is at 200. And I have thoughts, but we have a package here and I really want to open it. First book that we have here. Oh my God. Yo. Okay. So the publisher sent Pearl by Josh Mallerman. Josh Mallerman wrote Goblin. He wrote Bird Box. He wrote The Inspection. I love this author and I'm so excited that he has a new book out. So go to the farm just outside of town and you'll hear it. A voice inside your head. Or is it? Come to me. It says. A voice that makes you want to pick up that axe over in the corner of the barn and swing it and kill. Feed us. Feed us now. It is the voice of Pearl. Sing for me. Sing for your precious Pearl. Oh, okay. So they sent Detransition Baby as well. I already have a hardcover of this book. I'm not sure which of those I'm going to keep, but I would love to know from y'all. Do you prefer hardcovers or softcovers for your books? Let me know in the comment section down below. We're supposed to be buddy reading the heart principle, but instead I'm just watching Jan read it. <laughs> it's at least four stars, let me tell you that. I was going to say, if you had to rate it right now, what would you rate it? At least four stars. <laughs> at least four stars. There's no reason for it to not be five stars. I just like, why is it taking me this long? <laughs> Maybe it's because your heart knows that something bad is coming. <laughs> Ew, why'd you look up like the grudge? Stop, I'm alone. You're never alone. Oh my god, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not fucking say that. Don't do that. <laughs> Hello, I have thoughts so we are updating y'all on two books the x hex and love hypothesis one of which is the bee's knees and the other of which is giving dead cat i don't think it's going to surprise any of y'all but the x hex was just absolutely 110 percent not 
it. So y'all know that we read 99.9% .9 of this book while driving to Michigan and then got home, read the last chapter, and the first line that we just opened to says winter semester was always a little bleak and that is exactly how we feel about this entire book. I think conceptually this book is really cool. It's got the witch thing going for it. It has nice atmosphere etc. There's a lot of I get why it's so popular. Nothing about this book was memorable for me though. Did not care about the romance, didn't believe in it one bit, didn't care about the characters, didn't believe in them, didn't believe in the magic of the story or even the witch element. The writing was so meh. Like it just was the most lukewarm book I've ever read and I'm giving it three stars. It's just very basic, very run-of-the-mill. I can see why it's so commercially popular and I'm glad y'all are enjoying it. Uh, I will be unhauling this. We're about to switch gears. We're about to get into a whole new vehicle because I have entirely different thoughts and opinions and feelings on the love hypothesis. So as of right now, we are on page 224. And y'all remember that we said we physically had to force ourselves to from stopping at the like 100 page mark because it was two in the morning and we like physically had to pull ourselves away from this book. And now it's like I'm reading this book at the most glacial pace because I keep having to stop and highlight and underline and crack up like I cannot read this book in public I was reading it while getting my oil changed and then at the clinic while getting my allergy inject injections and we kept getting the weirdest looks because I'm just in the corner wheezing and hyperventilating over this book I have never read a funnier book in my life I did not think this book was going to be this funny. The chemistry, like the romance moves so fast in some ways and slow in other ways, but the chemistry, it works. It's so believable. Like it is believable in all the ways that the X-Hex is not and was not. Um, Adam is amazing. Like I get the grumpy sunshine trope and he is absolutely serving grumpy. And um, it's amazing. Like he is 100% the kind of protagonist that I tend to fall for. Just the vibes are all there. Just absolutely immaculate. I have such a big crush on him. And I was saying on Twitter, this is weird. Like it's weird for me to be crushing on a cis boy. And yet here I am, rock me like a hurricane. That is Adam. I'm loving the sciency vibes. I love just our sweet, anxious protagonist. But it's the banter. Like I keep saying this, but it's the banter. Every single line is funny. Every single scene has chemistry. They have mad chemistry. And the there's like a little miscommunication happening and for once in my life it doesn't bother me because the book is that good and the miscommunication feels believable in ways that it usually doesn't and now we're at the only one bed trope pop up and just that whole scene is cracking me up. The scene with the used tissue <laughs> that's cracking me up and it's just like there's so many things I just want to sit down and reference about this book like I can't wait to go through and annotate this from top to bottom because it just absolutely needs it and deserves it and I just I really really freaking love this book like I care so deeply about these two. Oh, and then the secondhand embarrassment scenes I whew, blushing underneath my skin okay like the the secondhand embarrassment is so freaking real the cringy moments are so real so that being said <laughs> that being said these two have not really done more than kiss and they haven't like nothing about this book is like hot and heavy or um like steamy right but the anticipation is building anticipation i'm so excited for them to get it on which i i i've never said that before in a book like y'all know i'm on the a spectrum do not care about romance like very much do not care about sex scenes in my books don't need them don't want them I'm ready like I cannot wait for this to happen so that's just that's my reading update so far the x hex was meh this book is amazing I'm also absolutely loving the heart principle it is just it's just like my neuroatypical heart is singing I love both of the protagonists like I just I'm having such a good time reading The Love Hypothesis and The Heart Principle. Those are two books that I was really not expecting to love the way that I am. I actually assumed that The x would be my favorite book of this video and I haven't even started People We Meet on Vacation yet. So we'll see. <laughs> I 
I knew this was coming, so I had to pull out my... Okay, Lamaze. What's Lamaze? The pregnancy breathing. Ew, that's what it's called. I could have lived my entire life not on that. Hold on, it's coming. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, okay. That's it? Not anti climax. For the first time in my life, I finished a sex scene and immediately wanted to reread it. I'm shook. That alone makes this book five out of five stars. <laughs> I'm currently only on page 83, but utterly, utterly gripped, amazed, wowed. I cannot believe the chemistry and the, wow, the way that the sex scene is written and like how much I'm enjoying it and the banter and how easygoing the writing is. Just, I love everything about this book. This is so weird how from page one, I immediately started enjoying the romance. Already feels so familiar. I just, I'm really enjoying this book. And it's 2.30 in the morning um, and I'm gonna keep reading, but I just wanted to update on those thoughts before I forgot. Because since it's like so early in the morning, I might forget these details later. Who is it? Get her. <laughs> Get her. Okay. Get her. Get her. Oh. Not circling her prey. Ew, why'd she look at you like that? Why is the tongue sideways? Ew. <laughs> Not tasting. y'all coming to you hot and live from Jan's car. I'm, I'm the ring light. Jan is serving as the ring light because I wanted to film this update about the love hypothesis because y'all know in the last clip we were just singing the praises of this book like damn near ready to cry from joy and laughter and just absolutely like loving it. If I don't give this book five out of five stars I will be shocked but I have been hurt and shocked before aka rise to the sun but a lesson in vengeance. It, oh god. The thing though about Love Hypothesis that I wanted to talk about, I spoke about this a bit on Twitter, was that today, like on page 228 to 232, there's a really graphic sexual uh, harassment, sexual assault scene. And because this book doesn't have any content warnings and because like of all the people that we've heard talking about this book, we, we personally just hadn't heard anyone give content warnings for that. And the scene was like so well written that it was really visceral and it was just personally very triggering and very upsetting and like really messed up my headspace. And plus like because it was such a lighthearted, just like fun, sweet, safe romance, I was extra not prepared for that. So it's on chapter, it's in chapter 14 for those of you who are reading the audiobook. And I just wanted to make sure to give a big trigger warning um, for that, for like sex, sexual harassment in the workplace. And like, it just was awful. It was so upsetting. So I wanted to make sure 
that I gave a warning for that and like if you're viewing this book please try and mention that it does have a graphic sexual assault scene because it's awful <laughs> it's awful to be surprised and blindsided by that but still loving the book it is amazing and we are on our way to go to Target and then Savagathon starts tonight so I don't know when I'm gonna get to pick up Love Hypothesis and Heart Principle again it's gonna be really soon but not tonight because it's time for Sig it's, yep. it's time to get sapphic. <laughs> this is the sapphic scissors. Uh, got it. Look, it's like sapphic Pac-Man. Oh, Pac-Man was probably before your time. I know. I played Pac-Man. <laughs> I think they're so better because they're two years older. That too. <laughs> The first move was made. I haven't read the rest of the scene yet, but it was so good. It was so dirty. <laughs> oh my God. It was so, Jan, the chemistry. Get it? Yes. Oh. The, my skin is rippling. <laughs> Head of like 20 year old Jesse with the sagging skin. Not sagging skin. Oh my gosh, Jan. Jan. What? I have. I didn't think. I did not think that this book could make me feel the way that you make me feel. Aww. Y'all were reading for like five minutes. See, aren't y'all glad you <laughs> It's so good. It's so freaking good. Yeah, I'm glad that we picked it back up. That's fucking insane. It's so y'all are this obsessed with a hetero romance. <laughs> I don't know if y'all could hear, but Jan said it's insane that y'all are so obsessed with a hetero romance. A hetero romance. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with this couple. And, and the guy, like Adam. Oh my God. I love Adam. Olive is a sweet cinnamon roll. Gooey, pulled out of the oven, fresh, baking, <laughs> sizzling, caramelized. Oh. It's so freaking good. Dripping with frosting. I mean, not yet. The scene just started, but she will be. <laughs> No, what? Uh, just have sex. <laughs> if this fades to black, I will literally light a match and set myself on fire. I will cover every inch of my body in gasoline if this fades to black. I will burn myself on camera if it fades to black. Oh, <laughs> I needn't have worried. <laughs> Ew, not he kisses like a man starved. Ew. Now I'm concerned about how this sex scene's gonna go. Might be worse than hawk like cry. Please don't bring up hawk like cry. A black hawk down. <laughs> the hawk cry. <laughs> okay. Not to shamelessly plug, but if you don't know what we're talking about with hawk like cry, it is from the <laughs> the link to the latest Sapphicathon vlog will be in the description box below. If you want to watch Jan and I <laughs> react to the worst. <laughs> Freaking sexy that's ever been written. Y'all, I almost pissed my pants. I ran to the bathroom. I'm so sad I didn't have you running away on camera because I've never seen you move so quickly. <laughs> my little legs. Your little legs pumping. 
as you skittered <laughs> to the toilet. <laughs> The consent, yes. Jan, I cannot read this book next to you. It's so hot. It's making me uncomfortable. Leave the room. <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm black so that I can't <laughs> blush on camera. I feel a flush <laughs> creeping up my neck. <laughs> your book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Oh my gosh. Jan, will you just please read this book? It's so hot. 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 Whew. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Does it sound like a hawk out there? I never want to see a hawk again. Is this how you're supposed to feel when you read sex scenes? Mm -hmm. That's how that's how I feel. You know when I scream at y'all <laughs> through FaceTime. I am in a state of utter pure delight. <laughs> I can't wait for y'all to read the heart principle. <sighs> I can't. I, I cannot finish this scene on camera. I'm I'm good. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna survive. I can't let my subscribers see me like this. <laughs>
so much wet crackling in the back of our throats. Why is there so much fluid <laughs> and liquid? Liquids. <laughs> liquids. Not liquids. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Stop. Okay. Stop twinning. <laughs> I do it again. And the sound of my fingers fluttering over my slick flesh is loud in the dark room. <laughs> Why are her fingers <laughs> fluttering? <laughs> Over her vagina. <laughs> Not interpretive dance. <laughs> Jazz hands. <laughs> Ew, that's not. What is the? Mo I'm trying so hard to visualize what she's doing to herself. Floating over. Me. Like, is she just like, like touching it? Like, I. <laughs> Can I read about my vampires, please? Not spear my tongue into his mouth. Spear. <laughs> Why is this a fight scene? <laughs> This is supposed to be. Oh my god! Why is it so aggressive? Okay, Helen of Troy. Why? Are you yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Holy fuck! Uh. Not a stake in the heart of Dracula. Like, what? <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> I'll never get over slick flesh. Ew! I just don't understand why they're robbing a bank. <laughs> Don't we all have other better things to work? They need to pay for books, Jan. <clears throat> <laughs> How did this become Batman the Dark Knight? Like, I'm confused. As they're trying to rob the bank, she's like, I need to go to the library today. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Badween. <laughs> Jan, I'm trying to have a fucking moment. I just want to read <laughs> against you. <laughs> the limb tangle. <laughs> okay.
Oh, hello there. Today has been really fun, really busy. I have been editing my Come Book Shopping with me and Jan vlog that is going to be linked in the description box below. It's going up today and then also have the um, Sarah Lynn live show. And I am very, very excited about that. Um, I just absolutely love Non-Binary Book Club and I'm so glad that y'all are enjoying the book club. But today is also a very exciting day because I am almost done with these edits. I'm gonna make a little bit more adjustments and <laughs> editing this vlog has been so funny. Like I've just been cracking up because Jan, <laughs> Just Jan makes me laugh so freaking hard and I hope you guys like the vlog. But today is a very exciting day because I will be beginning The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Oh, it's not the people, it's just people. Cute. It is about like two o'clock and I have four hours before the live show for Non-Binary Book Club, which means I can really do some damage in this book, y'all. Okay, so I'm very, very excited. Not the son abandoning me like my father did. So this is going to be the last book that we are reading for this bookish experiment. I am excited because I've heard nothing but good things. I've heard that this is super freaking funny. But honestly, after the love hypothesis, this is going to be a tough act to follow. We had the X-Hex, which kind of was a bust for me. The Love Hypothesis, which was phenomenal. We had The Heart Principle, which was excellent. I ended up giving The Heart Principle four out of five stars. I might end up giving it five out of five stars just on principle because the conversations were so wonderful, but I did not at all really feel anything for the romance. I thought I did when I started reading the book, but I really didn't. However, like The Love Hypothesis, that takes the cake. People We Meet on Vacation is, um, is gonna have its work cut out for it because Following the love hypothesis, that's a tough act to follow. This video is not sponsored by Book of the Month, but if you wanna get your hands on any of these books, if you wanna get your first box for only $9.99, you can use my code BOWTIES and that will be in the description box below. Very excited, obviously so far, I recommend love hypothesis with my whole entire heart and soul. I'm only on page 38 and I'm incredibly bored. 
there was this really funny line toward, where was it? Did I not highlight it? Honestly, I probably shouldn't start highlighting in this book because I have a good feeling I'm gonna be giving it away. First of all, Flannery O'Connor is not an asshole. He says, she's shy. He's talking about his cat. She's evil. She just doesn't like you, he insists. You have strong dog energy. All I've ever done is try to pet her. I say, why have a pet who doesn't want to be petted? She wants to be petted, Alex says. You just always approach her with this like wolfish gleam in your eye. <laughs> now that I read it again, it's not that funny. I'm so bored. I am screaming. Alex and Poppy are in the car together for the first time their freshman year. <laughs> And she's like, dude, you're so uptight. And he says, I'm really not as uptight as you think I am. Poppy says, really? So you wouldn't mind if I put on Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You? <laughs> it's May, he says. Why is that me? <laughs> Look, I wait all year for it to become socially acceptable for me to bump Christmas music. Me. Good girl, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Yes, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Yes, who's a baby? Who's a baby? Who's a baby? Are you a baby? Let me see the leg. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna bite you. <laughs> Okay, I'm on page 92. I've never been so bored in my life. I really want to DNF this book, but I'm gonna hang in there until it starts to get romantic. I think these two have no chemistry. I had a random desire for popcorn, so I'm foraging. So let's see if I'm gonna get lucky since I'm clearly not getting lucky with this book. Ooh, I have popcorn! cha-cha-cha-cha. I think my brain was like, you have to do something to make this book bearable and butter is going to do the trick. You butter make me feel better. <laughs> when I open Tinder, it just shows me a middle finger. <laughs> she wants my candy. Yeah, you want candy? You want candy? You can't have it, cause you're a dog. Who's a dog? <laughs> oh, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? You can't have candy, you're a dog. You'll die. Can you say that? Die? Can't eat candy, you can't get doggy beaties. Not doggy beaties. <laughs> My roommates are having the time of their lives downstairs. So uh, I, uh, I've been defeated and I am ashamed. I am so ashamed to say that we're gonna have to DNF people we meet on vacation. And I, I tried so hard. Yes, Akasha, I know. She's disappointed in me too. I tried hard. I got to page 170, which I think is 
me really putting my best foot forward. This book is 360 pages. So I got quite far into it. And every single page, I was disinterested and just, there were a few chuckles here and there, right? Like there are some really good moments, but this book is not for me. I know that if I continue, it's just gonna be one star. So I'm gonna DNF it, okay? Um, I, I did not believe in the romance. I did not believe in the characters. I did not care about the characters. I did not feel that they had chemistry. I just, there was absolutely nothing. This book was giving me nothing. Even the writing was very meh for me personally. Like the travel atmosphere was also meh. I just, and I love, I love books where characters are going on a road trip or a journey or anything like that, which is why I thought this would be a good selection for this book of the month romance vlog because, you know, why not try and pick books that I think I'm going to like. This was not it. This was not that book. I should not have, I should have, we should have gone with somebody else because not her. Now, I do see why everybody else is digging this book. I do get it. And I'm not saying it's a bad book. It really just isn't for me. And I was hoping, I was hoping that um, I would at least enjoy a sex scene. We got to page 170, they still hadn't done it, and I was tired of waiting for it. And to be honest, I highly doubt that the sex scene would impact me in any way. Editing Jesse here, forgot to say that in conclusion for this experiment, I am not converted to romance at all. I will not crave them. I will not crave picking up a romance. However, I will read everything that Allie Hazelwood, who wrote Love Hypothesis, writes from now until the very end of time. I'm going to end this vlog here. This was a really, really fun experiment. Let me know if you want to see any other... Can you just let me finish this clip, please? Okay, let me know what other book of the month experiments you would like to see me do. Leave them in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this book of the month romance reading blog slash an asexual grump tries to read romance for the first time. Oh, apparently now it's puppy play time because I've been reading all day. Don't forget my book of the month code is in the description box below if you want to sign up and get your first box for $9.99. I also did a video where I annotated Keeper of Night, a book of the month selection that I really, really loved. It is spoiler free. So that video is in the description box below as well. But all of my social media links are in the description box below too, along with my Patreon and just all of that good stuff. So until next time. Okay, Akasha, please. I'm trying to end the video. Ma'am, okay. Stay safe and I hope to see you in my next video. Mwah! Mwah, 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 mwah.